Jazz Club. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Big Wristwatches. This video is going to be a little bit different than my other videos because unlike the other videos this one will not be scripted and so this will just be me speaking my mind. And today we're going to talk about the new, or newish anyway, Black Bay Chrono. Now uh, I recently added this watch into my collection um, after having had a steel and gold version, the previous version, which was a little bit thicker than this one, but it's just a smidgen, less than a millimeter, but it is noticeable. Um, now when this new version, or I should say versions, because there's another version with a white dial, came out, um, I was immediately smitten. Um, I, I think it was just a bullseye uh, for Tudor what they did with the watch. Uh, it's, it's an amazing design and basically it's Tudor's um, way of working to roll out watches slowly. Now the initial offerings of the Black Bay Chrono I didn't really like because of the metal bezels and stuff like that. Uh, those are not my thing. Um, I did own um, the normal divers, the Black Bay divers, and I think I had three or four uh, even. I think I had three times the one with the red bezel and then one time I had the, the one with the gilt tile, so with the gold accents, which was lovely, I have to say. And then recently, as I said, I had the steel and gold uh, chronograph. But the problem with steel and gold is always that I, I really like it on paper. And as soon as I get it, I totally love it. But after like a week or two, it, it, it just, I grow tired of it. And, and I don't know why it's because it's a little bit flashy. Um, I'm not sure why, but yeah. So I, after a short while, I grew tired of the watch and uh, I sold it again. But now with the recent, um, so in, in April, I think uh, Tudor came out with uh, these two new models. So one with a white dial with black subdials, which I really like. And actually I wanted to have that one first because it reminds me of the Rolex Daytona, uh, the Paul Newman Daytona. But um, the, the thing is with white dials is that I always have a very big love for them on paper. But then as soon as I get them on my wrist, the same thing with steel and gold. Uh, I grow tired of it quickly. I have a thing for black dials and, and uh, I get the impression that if a watch isn't too um, flashy, then it tends to stay longer in my collection. Um, now, we'll have to see whether that will be the case uh, with this new Tudor um, Black Bay Chrono, which you can see uh, wears very nicely on my wrist, which, as I said in my previous video, has become a lot smaller. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about this one. So um, the, the serial number of this one, or at least the model number is uh, M79360N-0002. It's not really the easiest uh, model numbers, but uh, yeah, we have to work with what uh, Tudor gives us. It has a manufacturer caliber MT5813, which is uh, COSC certified. Um, and as we all know, or may not know, it is based on the Breitling B01, but Tudor did make some modifications uh, to it. Now, this is part of an exchange program where Tudor like um, lent out a movement to Breitling. Um, uh, don't know exactly the, the name of that one. And then Breitling lent out the B01 to Tudor. Now, this is a very nice value proposition because if you go look at the watches uh, from Breitling with the B01, I think they're all around 8,000 euros. And if you look at the, the new Black Bay Chrono, it's about 5,000 euros. And to be quite honest um, regarding finish and, and everything, it's, it's really uh, a great looking watch. It's, it's very nicely finished. Um, the bracelet is very comfortable. I'm going to give you a few close-ups of the watch. As you can see, it's gorgeous with that red accent on the dial. Also, as I said, it became just a little bit thinner than the previous generation. You see this riveted bracelet, of course, we all know that it's not really riveted. It has a very nice clicking clasp, very nicely finished. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a, an amazing watch. And then 
It's also 200 meters water resistant, which means that um, you can basically wear this swimming without any issue. So it's, it's the perfect one watch um, collection, basically, which obviously isn't the case for me because I'm a freak, but for most people, I think if you just need one watch, then this is it basically because it has everything you would need. So we have the screw down pushers, right? So as you can see, you can just screw them out like that. And then you can actuate the chronograph movement, which is a column wheel movement. The kind we all want. Up. And then we can screw them back in again. Now, screwing, screwing crown, uh, pushers is important, not because the pushers are not water resistant, because they are, but the, the thing is with pushers that you can't accidentally push them in when you're underwater. So that's the reason why um, there are screw down pushers. There are a lot of chronographs, uh, for example, the, the Breitling um, uh, chronomat, which is also 200 meter water resistant and doesn't have screw down uh, pushers. But those usually are a bit more recessed into the case, which, um, yeah, which influences the, the general look, basically. So, yeah, I, I'm a very big fan um, of this watch. Uh, I really like this black dial. I'm not sure if you can see it in, 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 um, in the videos. And, and I, I actually, I was a little bit surprised, but it, it's, in some pictures, the white subdials look a little bit uh, silvery. But in fact, they are like... A pearl color. Um, not sure if it registers right on, on the um, on the camera here, but it's it's an amazing color basically, and I really like it because usually silver subdials not such a big fan, but this really pops, and yeah, it's 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 just an amazing an amazing value proposition in my opinion. Now um, the design harkens back to the Daytona six two three nine. Um, which basically is uh, impossible uh, for any normal human being to get um, because of the price point. It's, it's, uh, it's super expensive. Um, now, this is very nicely done and it harkens back to that era. It has a very clear racing pedigree. Um, it is a very bold watch. It is quite tough looking. Look at it. Um, it's not a subtle watch, but it does wear quite nicely, as I said. It does fit under a cuff, okay? Uh, maybe not the tightest cuffs, but under a shirt sleeve, sleeve it's no issue. Um, and also, I, I think from a value perspective, uh, what Tudor is doing for the moment, it's, it's basically amazing. Now, I, I know that the watches are also getting more and more difficult uh, to get, apparently. Uh, also, there are waiting lists for this model also, I heard. I heard people talking about six months and stuff like that. Uh, that's still okay because um, a few weeks back uh, I was at the seaside in Belgium. I went into a Rolex dealer to ask for a no date sub, which is basically the cheapest sub that you can get. And they said, are you sure you want to get on the waiting list? Because it's at least, uh, I thought he said, uh, did he say six years or nine years? <laughs> I'm not sure anymore, but it's, it's, it's ridiculous at, at this point in time. And, and obviously that's, well, I'm going to keep that for another video, but um, I have my thoughts on that. Uh, it, it's not all Rolex's fault, but, but obviously they do, um, and I understand them from a business perspective. I'm also an independent, I'm also a freelancer. I know, know what business means and, and they have a very high demand and they don't want to ramp up supply because they don't want to become a, a, a mass produced brand, which basically they already are, but, but not even bigger than, than they already are. They want to remain small. Um, and I respect that, but the problem is that the prices on the market are just getting totally ridiculous. And at one point in time, I think as a buyer, you need to ask yourself the question, is this watch really worth paying this much money for it? For example, if we we're talking about a Daytona uh, at the time of recording of this video, I think they're about 35,000 euros. For me, that watch is not worth 35,000 euros. If I could get one at retail, I would do it. Um, and not for the, for the resale value, to be quite honest, because of course that is important also because if I invest money in watches, I want at least to get the money that I invested, I want to be able to get it back. But 
it's not important for me to to make any profit on it i just don't want to lose money that's the only only goal that i have and i think that watch is really worth what rolex is asking for it but not a penny more and and i think basically that holds true for their whole lineup i think they're very fairly priced for what you get because basically every rolex watch is is bomb proof it's 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 totally dependable it will work in 20 years it will work in 50 years you can do basically anything you want with it um it th they are totally great but the problem is is that the prices are getting totally out of hand and and i'm not sure if this is ever gonna stop i think it will depend on the market and the general uh, economy um, whether this inflation will, will, will keep on growing, but that, that's another discussion point entirely. Um, but, but to be quite honest, for me, I'm, I'm done buying Rolexes over market value. The only type of Rolex that I would still buy now is maybe vintage, because obviously they don't make any more of them. I recently bought a, a Sea Dweller, uh, of which I will probably make another video in the future. And I did overpay a little bit, because you overpay for every Rolex, but I still thought that it was more or less, uh, so basically it was, was below 10,000 euros. I, I think that was more or less um, fair to what the watch is offering still. But if you look at uh, prices of, of, a, of a no date sub or a sub, it's, it's like two times retail. And, and I, I, it, for me, it, it's, it's just not worth it. But that's for me. Everybody has its own opinion and everybody can do with its money, with his or hers money, uh, what they want. So, so that's just me. Which is a very long story to say that Tudor fits in really nicely because basically it, it has the same heritage as Rolex eh? because it's, it's, it's the, the daughter brand of Rolex. Um, it's a very nice value proposition. You can get them. Uh, obviously, there are also already waiting lists, which is also a good thing because uh, second-hand prices are actually pretty stable. I, I got this one second-hand and I almost paid retail, basically. Um, so, so that's also great because I know if I buy a watch, then I will get my money back, which you can't say regretfully for a Breitling, for example, because they, they usually lose about 30% of their value as soon as you walk out the store. Um, so this is not true for Tudor. Um, so for me, this is a very nice value proposition. It's a very great looking watch. Uh, I love the look of it. Um, it wears beautifully. It is very nicely finished. From a technical perspective, the movement is great. Okay, it may not be Tudor made, but it's a manufactured movement by Breitling, which is great in my book because the B01 is a, a, a terrific movement. Um, you can swim with it, you can basically do everything with it. It would be my go-to watch to take on holiday, for example, because I, I, I wouldn't think twice about jumping in a pool with this uh, or knocking it against uh, anything, which I usually try to avoid. But if it does happen, then okay, then that's the case. Uh, you can always get it refinished. And these days you can get it refinished in a manner that you don't see the difference. So um, yeah, I, I am a huge fan of these new tutors. Um, what I see is that the, the Kronos actually aren't offered that much. Uh, Obviously, it's still pretty fresh because they only released it about uh, five months ago. Um, but what I do see is that the divers really get offered a lot, especially the BB58, the smaller version, which may very well be a good, um, a good idea for me to try on uh, one of these days. Uh, but I, I'm not really looking to have two tutors in the collection, to be quite honest. And then I would have to sell this one and I really like it. Um, but, but you do see that there's a lot of um, regular Tudor divers moving, which isn't so much the case with these chronographs. Uh, so yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, I really hope that you guys also uh, are a fan and that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like and subscribe. I think I have about 170 subscribers for the moment, so <laughs> it can go up the number and I would really like it to go up. Uh, because then that would be an incentive to make more of these videos. Um, so yeah, if you want to um, ask me anything or comment, uh, do it in the, in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I will see you for a video next time. Thank you very much. Bye.